Oh, hello, this is Tak Chung from Walk with Tak. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, recently, a viewer asked me about a wok, which is a 15 inch Cuisine Art 5 ply stainless steel wok. And he asked me, What do I think about it? Now, I have not used this wok before, so I got one and tested it out. And I purchased it from Amazon and it cost $130. I do not know that much about 5 ply stainless steel wok, and the only one that I'm familiar with is the one uh, produced by All Clap, but that one is over $300. So when I find this wok is only $129, and I thought this is a good deal, so I decided to give it a try. And my everyday wok is a Cusina 14 inch stainless steel wok, and I really like using this wok. And this wok is approximately about $40. But it's very different uh, because this wok is only a single layer with the bottom that is multiplied, which I will explain what does that mean. Uh, here is a video that I have reviewed this wok. So when I received this KitchenAid wok, I was very excited. I cannot wait to take it out from the box and uh, take a close look at it. Uh, this wok is referred to as a five ply wok. Now the five ply wok means that uh, the wok actually makes up of five different layers of material. And the reason for that is that stainless steel is a poor conductor and it is not good for heat transfer. Aluminum turned out to be much better. So the best way to improve the performance of a stainless steel wok is to incorporate aluminum into the stainless steel wok. And this is where the term five ply come from. Now the famous uh, this type of wok is by a company called All Clap, and they well known uh, for create this multi-ply wok. The simple version of this multi-ply wok is a free ply wok. Uh, in this case, uh, you have two layers of stainless steel, both on the inside and the outside of the wok. And in the middle of this is a layer of aluminum. Now this layer of aluminum is important for heat conduction. So this will make the wok perform much better in terms of its ability uh, to conduct heat as well as distribute the heat evenly. Now in the case of a 5 ply wok, uh, you actually have two layers of aluminum sandwiched between three layers of stainless steel. And the end result is that it supposedly have much better heat transfer as well as heat distribution. So this KitchenAid is a five-ply wok. Now in the case uh, of uh, the multi-clap, they also have a five-ply wok, more expensive. And here you have a, a cook standard 13-inch stainless steel wok, which is a three-ply. As you can see, it's significantly cheaper uh, than the five-ply wok provided by Cuisin Arts. And then we have another wok which is made by a company called Willow and Everett. It is also a free ply wok and is again right around $70. Now so what is the difference between the wok that I use which is a Cuisin Art 14 inch stainless steel wok. As you can see here it is about $40. The difference is that the wok body itself is only a single layer of stainless steel whereas the bottom of the wok actually is a free ply wok and this will provide better heat transmission at the bottom of the wok that where it counts. So when I got this wok I'm very interested to take a look because a wok with a five ply means that it has more material it's likely to be significantly heavier and as you can see this wok is a 15 inch wok. Now a 15 inch wok has some advantage is that because it will actually reduce splattering. Now this wok is interesting uh, because the bottom of the wok is actually almost round and the construction of this wok actually lead to a somewhat a round bottom wok. Now the Cusina 14 inch stainless steel wok has a flat bottom surface area. Unlike most of the woks on the market in the United States, they usually have two handles, a long that like a frying pan like handle, 
and in a small handle which is frequently known as the helper handle. However, this wall has both of these handles that are small. Now at the bottom of the wall, as I have mentioned to you earlier, uh, it has a round bottom. The construction of the wall is excellent. It's aesthetically very pleasing and it also has a shiny surface. In the inside of the wall, it is slightly matted. So in this case, it probably can't uh, make any small scratches, not as clear and visible. Now standard steel wall will be scratched. Okay, before I'm going to give it a try, I will wash up the wok. The wok comes already very clean. All I have to do is put some soap over it and then I'm going to rinse it. This makes standard steel wok extremely easy and convenient to clean. Uh, after I clean up the wok, I want to weigh see how much this wok weight. I put it on my scale and the wok weighs in at 4 pounds 14 ounces. This makes this wok uh, weight about uh, almost 5 pounds. Uh, for me, a 5 pound wok is a little bit too heavy uh, for my liking. Uh, because I like my wok to be light so I can easily move them about. So the Cusina 14 inch stainless steel wok, which I put it onto the scale, it weighs right around 3 pounds. So it is uh, 2 pounds lighter than the Kitchen 8 stainless steel wok. What is different is because of the five ply nature. Is it worth it? Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate how to uh, fry an egg. Now frying an egg, uh, the surface of the wok has to have a non-stick cooked surface, otherwise the egg will stick. And to achieve this, uh, I can not easily season the wok. Now I have a stainless steel wok and I season it all the time. The only difference is that you have to season it each time uh, before you cook. Uh, because with a stainless steel wok, uh, the season do not stick on, and particularly if you clean the wok with detergent, it will remove the non-stick cook surface that you can create easily use my spot seasoning method. And using this method, you can create a non-stick cook surface. So here I'm going to demonstrate after I did the spot seasoning, whether the wok has a non-stick cook surface, whether this actually function properly. Now this is a brand new wok, so I season it with my spot seasoning method and I'm going to fry an egg in it. As you can see that initially when the egg first added to the wok, it sticks slightly. And this is only natural. I probably could have seasoned the wok a little bit longer by let the oil to smoke for maybe extra 5 to 10 seconds and that probably will solve the problem. And nevertheless, once the egg starts frying, uh, I have no problem in to move the egg around. So uh, by and large, this wok season very well. It has no problem. Uh, as in all stainless steel wok, they have no problem in seasoning uh, even when I start to use the wok very for the very first time. And the spot seasoning method worked really well with stainless steel wok. And uh, uh, particularly after you use the wok for a little while, uh, that does the seasoning does stay on the wok for a little bit uh, more. And so, for example, now uh, when I fry the second egg, uh, the result should be much better. A stainless steel wok, in my mind, will in time replace carbon steel wok, uh, simply because they are much easier to maintain and in terms of their ability to be seasoned, it's really not that different from carbon steel wok. It might be a little bit not as uh, familiar, quick as uh, carbon steel wok, but once you start to get used to the stainless steel wok, uh, you have no problem in creating a non-cooked surface, as in the case I've demonstrated with uh, frying an egg. Now, as you notice that when I fry the third egg, uh, I have very little oil left on the surface of the wok. And this again demonstrates the accumulation of the seasoning process on the surface of the wok, that resulting uh, to have uh, a very effective non-cooked surface. Okay, uh, now when I look at the wok itself, uh, I think I really find it interesting 
that the surface of the rock in fact is almost round. Now as you can see in here, uh, the bottom surface of this rock is relatively small in area. So um, when you turn the rock around, you notice that uh, it actually has only a very small flat surface area. So the rock essentially is almost like a round bottom rock. Uh, this small flat surface area measure a little bit over uh, 3 inches across. And uh, so it provides a relatively small air flat area. So you can consider it almost like a round bottom wall. If you're looking for a round bottom wall, and this wall may be an excellent choice. Uh, even though the flat surface area is relatively small, I have no problem. The wall is very stable and it stays really well. Uh, the next is I'm going to uh, do some fire rise and to demonstrate that uh, the effectiveness of a larger wok. Uh, I'm going to start out with uh, three eggs, which I'm going to fry sunny side up, and then I'm going to scramble it. Uh, I'm going to add about three cups of uh, cooked jasmine rice to make this fire rice. Now, when I use a, a smaller wok, one of the problems is that uh, when you cook this amount of fried rice, it's quite likely uh, for the rice to spill out of this wok because of the size. But this wok doesn't seem to be have any problem. Here, uh, I use a uh, meat masher to smash up the rice. As you can see, there's quite a bit of rice in the wok. And then I'm going to uh, fry it with some um, frozen vegetable mix. Together, it worked very well. I have no problem. As you can see, this wok is big enough. There are plenty of space. The advantage of a larger wok, such as a 15-inch wok in this case, uh, is to reduce the amount of uh, sp spilling, and also it will reduce the amount of splattering if you use anything that contain moisture. So if you are looking for a larger wok, this wok is probably is a good candidate. And also, if you are looking for a round bottom wok, and I think this wok is excellent to serve that purpose as well. However, this wok, because it does have a flat surface area, so you can use it without any problem in a uh, conventional stove, such as an electric stove with a glass top surface, you will find it work very well. Now, it's not as stable as a wok with a larger flat surface area, but nevertheless, it works really well, so you can use it without a wok ring, as in the case of a other type of round bottom wok. Okay, so here it is. Uh, I really enjoy this wok. It's an excellent wok, uh, $129. It's not a bad price at all. If you are looking for a 15-inch wok with 5-ply constructions, and this wok definitely is something that you should consider. I post a video each day to help you to make home cooking as part of your daily routine using my fast cooking system. And if you are interested to learn more about this cooking system, please subscribe to this channel. Uh, keep on cooking. I will see you tomorrow.